A few years ago, two priests and I were presiding over the Easter vigil, and I was incensing the Paschal candle, and all of a sudden I heard a thud. And I looked down at the, at the carpet and I saw something black on the carpet. Immediately I thought it was the charcoal from the thurifer and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna set this church on fire. Now everything's dark at this point in time so I can't really see what exactly this black thing is. But, and, and as I sat down, the priest beside me said, you're trying to, you're trying to set the church on fire? Now thanks be to God, it was just a metal part at the bottom of the thurifer so all was well. You know, the people in darkness have seen a great light. You know, what a blessing it is that we have come to know Christ. You know, and our second reading really points out that we are children of the light. You know, we all have darkness and we all have light within us. And nobody is fully dark and nobody is fully full of light. We have a mix. And yet we recognize that the light of Christ is stronger than any darkness within our hearts or darkness in our world. And we know this through the death and resurrection of Christ. You know, the great injustice of the cross was not enough darkness to overcome God's love and goodness through resurrection. You know, in the, in the first reading, you know, the, Samuel and, and Jesse are kind of in the dark. Like, who is going to be the next king? And Jesse doesn't even choose David as even a possibility. And yet Samuel is in tune with that that presence of God within and he's he's like you have, you know he recognizes that there has to be another son and so David is chosen and David is filled with the Holy Spirit and you know David will mess up I actually I kind of I kind of like the story of David because you know he messes up and yet he stays firm to having a heart for God I mean this is the reason why he doesn't knock the head of the prophet Nathan when Nathan challenges him for committing adultery and murdering somebody, he has the heart for God. And you know, despite our darknesses, hopefully we also, through the presence of the Spirit, have a heart for God as well. In our gospel reading, we have a, a man born blind that Jesus heals. Now, he doesn't do it in the, in the most... Uh, pretty of fashions, you know, mud and spit and all that, but nonetheless, the, the, bl the blind man is healed. Now, this was a moment of celebrating. This is the true meaning of Sabbath that, you know, you could experience Sabbath rest, that is to say, you could experience God. Isn't that what we're supposed to do on our Sabbath day, is to focus on God, to renew ourselves in God, so that we can continue to go about and serve the Lord the rest of the, of the week. Now, there's a few different reactions. The first reaction is, you know, eventually the, the, the man born blind will come to embrace Jesus as Lord. Lord, I believe. You know, he's, he's in, even though he can see now, he's still in darkness, but eventually he sees the light and he is able to accept Jesus as Lord. And then we have the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees were not willing to celebrate in the gift of healing. Isn't this the most important thing that's just happened? In that they're caught up in this little, this concept that Jesus was working because he healed somebody. Therefore, this is not of God. They're not willing to embrace this and accept this. And then we have the parents who, when they're questioned, I mean, they're full of fear. They don't want to be excommunicated from, from their religion. And so they kind of shy away from really being truthful. And, you know, and, but, you know, this, but, you know, this is the reality of our life. Sometimes we will be afraid to proclaim the gospel. We will be afraid to proclaim Jesus Christ. But yet, once again, we can all be strengthened. We can all be enlightened as we gather around the table. Lord, and, you know, whatever has happened during our week, if we've dropped this or dropped that or had this fall on us, you know, we come to the table to be strengthened, to be nourished, to be encouraged that truly the light of Christ is more powerful than any darkness within our hearts and any darkness in, in our world. And may we live as children of the light.